audiences only. Some viewers might find this disturbing. Karina N. Vitrano was born on July 12th, 1986 in New York to parents Kathy Vitrano and Philip Vitrano. She had a brother and a sister. She attended Archbishop Molly High School in Queens, New York. She went on to attend St. John's University, where she obtained her master's degree in speech pathology. She worked with children with autism as a speech pathologist. Karina was also an inspiring writer. She was featured in a 2013 short film that was directed by one of her close friends. One interesting fact about Karina was that her father was a firefighter with the New York City Fire Department during the 9-11 attacks. On August 2, 2016, Karina decided to go for an afternoon run, just as she always did in Spring Creek Park, which was less than a block away from her home. She usually ran with her dad, but he was taking a break from running due to a back injury. Karina was last seen alive around 5 p.m. as she entered Spring Creek Park when she failed to return a missed text message and phone calls. That's when suspicion began to arise. Karina's father reported her missing by informing a neighbor who just so happened to be a New York police officer. Around 11 p.m., Karina's father found her body. She was 15 feet off the trail and found face down. Her sports bra was pulled down, exposing her chest area. Her underwear and shorts were rolled around her left thigh. Her right leg was covered with scratches and bruises. She had clumps of grass in her hands from when she was dragged off the trail, and she was more than likely stopping herself by gripping the grass. Her cause of death was a result of strangulation. She had been strangled so hard a handprint was found around her neck. Karina was only 4 foot 11 and weighed 105 pounds. The killer's DNA was found under her fingernails, on her back, and on her phone. Police announced a reward of $10,000 to locate Karina's killer. Initially, there weren't any leads. Even though there was DNA found at the crime scene, police combed through 600 DNA samples. 1,700 investigative reports and 250 leads. On August 7, 2016, less than a week after the murder of Karina, another young woman was found murdered on a rural stretch road. 27-year-old Vanessa Marcolt. She was also killed while on her run. Police believe that these murders were committed by the same person, but DNA proved that that wasn't the case. A witness described to police a man that was spotted coming out of Spring Creek around the time Karina was killed. Police released a sketch composite of the person of entrance on August 31st. On September 12th, Crime Watch Daily released the surveillance video of Karina running just moments before she was killed. Karina's family created a GoFundMe of $250,000 as a reward to bring the killer to justice, or if anyone knew any information regarding the killer. The GoFundMe accumulated over $290,000, and the rest was donated to charity. Six months after her murder, on February 4th, 2017, police announced a possible suspect had been taken into custody for question. 20-year-old Chanel Lewis. Chanel's DNA was a match to the DNA found at the crime scene. He was arrested and charged with a second-degree murder. A little backstory of who Chanel was. Chanel was a Brooklyn resident. He had a few run-ins with police. He had three summons, two for a traffic violation and one for being in public. Chanel was reported as lurking in the backyard of several homes in May of 2016. He expressed that he had a hatred for women and told one of the teachers he wanted to, quote, stab all the girls, end quote. According to police, this is what happened on the day of the murders. 
Chanel and his family got into an argument, which prompted him to leave the house and go for a walk in Spring Creek Park. He spotted Karina jogging. There wasn't any evidence that Karina and Chanel knew each other. When Chanel returned home, his mother said that he came home looking disheveled and his clothes were torn. Chanel's response was that he was jumped by several men. The next day, Chanel's father took him to the emergency room for some scrapes and bruises that he had on his upper body, as well as a hand injury. The trial began on November 5th, 2018. During the trial, Phil Vetrano testified in court about how he created a search to find his daughter. On November 14th, forensic biologist Linda Rosano testified that Chanel Lewis's DNA had a 1 in 6 trillion chance of someone else sharing a genetic profile. The DA's assistant asked the judge to dismiss Chanel Lewis's charges, which included first-degree murder, two charges of second-degree murder, and one charge of first-degree S. A. This trial ended off in a hung jury due to defensive arguments claiming that the DNA evidence was contaminated. On November 21st, 2018, a judge announced a mistrial and scheduled a retrial for January 22nd, 2019. Another retrial was scheduled for March of 2019. On April 1st, 2019, after five hours of deliberation, Chanel was found guilty. He was charged with two counts of second-degree murder, one count of first-degree murder, and one count of S.A. His sentencing hearing wasn't scheduled until April 17th. On April 23rd, 2019, Chanel Lewis was sentenced to life in a prison without the possibility of parole.